Hello YouTubers, this is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today I'll be doing a review on the Gemini Jets version Atlantic Boeing 747-400 and their Billboard Metallic Livery Scheme in the flaps down version in a 1-200 scale model. I purchased this model from JetCollectors.com whose store is based out of Grass Valley, California which is near San Francisco, California here in the United States of America and their website address is www.jetcollectors.com but first before I go into details about this particular aircraft model allow me to share some information about the history of Virgin Atlantic and how they came about if you would please Virgin Atlantic is a British based airline that was established in the year of 1984 as British Atlantic Airways and briefly thereafter changed the name to what has become known to the world today as Virgin Atlantic and officially commenced operations on June 22, 1984, when the airline inaugurated its first maiden flight from London Gatwick Airport in London, England, to Newark Liberty International Airport in Newark, New Jersey, using a leased Boeing 747-200 that bears the registration ship number G-VIRG that was christened Maiden Voyager, formerly operated by Aerolinas Argentinas, whereas the headquarters of Virgin Atlantic, known as the BHQ, is located in a business park in the South London suburb of Crawley, England, which is located nearby Gatwick Airport, while the airline's main operating bases are located on the grounds of London Heathrow Airport, which is located approximately 14 miles west of central London in the borough of Hillendon and Manchester Airport, which is located approximately 8.6 miles southwest of the Manchester City Centre that's located in the Civil Parish section of Ringway. Virgin Atlantic is currently United Kingdom's seventh largest operating airline based in terms of passenger volume. Virgin Atlantic currently flies to 30 destinations in North America, the Caribbean, Africa, the Middle East, and Asia from its main operating base at Heathrow Airport and its secondary base at Manchester Airport. The airline also operates seasonal flights from Glasgow, Scotland, and Belfast, Ireland, with an operating fleet of 30, 38 aircraft, as this particular aircraft is no longer operating in the Virgin Atlantic fleet. As of July 2021, or at the time of this video review posting, Virgin Atlantic is one of 61 airlines in the world that currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier, according to the international airline review firm Skytrax Magazine. And the Boeing customer code for Virgin Atlantic for this particular aircraft is 1R. Alright everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box here where you see the uh, 20th anniversary uh, Gemini and Gray Go decal right up here. And you also see the flaps down version, there's two versions there, I got that one. You see the Virgin Atlantic title, the logo, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type. The 1200 scale diecast aircraft model, as well as the item number information you see displayed at the front of the box. Now, you're looking at the back of the box where you see the engraved Gemini 200 decal engraved in gold, along with the other information, the Facebook social media page information, the Boeing official license product decal. You can pause and read the rest of that information if you like. In the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving. All right, let's keep it moving. All right, now you're looking at the top of the box where you see the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the warning information, as well as the item number information that sits on top of the box. Now you're looking at the bottom of the box where you see the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, as well as their website information. Now you're looking at the left side of the box where you see the engraved gold Gemini 200 decal, the 1-200 scale diecast model information, the flaps down, that's just the flaps down version, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the aircraft type, as well as the item number you see on the left side of the box. Now you're looking at the right side of the box, the same information on the left side of the box I showed you earlier on, all right? Now you're looking at this nice little metal model stand that actually came with the model. And you see that black pattern on top of the model stand. The sole purpose of that black pattern, everyone, is not only to protect your model, it also prevent it from being damaged or scratched when you put your model on this particular model stand. 
All right, now you're looking at this plastic bag, and what you see in this plastic bag are the actual gear replacement doors featuring two little toothpicks for these gear replacement doors. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, all right? Okay, with all that information out of the way about the history of Bird in the Atlantic and how they came about and still operating strongly as we speak, including the... Uh, information on the front of the box as well as the information at the back of the box the model stand actually came with the model plus the gear replacement uh, doors inside that plastic bag there with no further ado everyone here is the actual model check it out there it is everyone the Gemini Jets Virgin Atlantic Boeing 747-400 in their billboard metallic livery scheme and a 1 to 1 scale in the flaps down version all right, allow me to share some information about this livery scheme, okay? This is the current livery scheme of Virgin Atlantic, which is actually called the Billboard Metallic Livery Scheme, as this livery scheme, along with the brand identity of Virgin Atlantic, was unveiled on J July 29, 2010. The Virgin Atlantic name that was previously labeled on the fuselage is now largely emblazoned across the entire front half of the fuselage of every Virgin Atlantic aircraft in a fine custom-drawn font. The undercarriage belly of the aircraft now features the Virgin Atlantic billboard title, which is actually painted in dark purple across the aircraft for the sole purpose of becoming more recognizable when taking off as well as landing. The Virgin Atlantic brand was reviewed and refined by the consultancy firm of the Circus Brand Agency, whose global headquarters is based out of London, England, while the livery scheme, as well as the logo, was de developed by the award-winning design consultancy firm of Johnson Banks in collaboration with the in-house brand design team that was led by Joe Ferry and Nina Jenkins. All right, so with no further ado, let's get down to the new degree. Allow me to show you all the details on this aircraft mount, shall we? Let's roll. All right, we're going now you're looking at the front of the aircraft, we're gonna start there here on the port slash left side of the aircraft where you see the nose gears, the nose gear struts, the landing gear lights. I'm gonna give you a better visual of those later on. Uh, the landing gear door featuring the uh, partial registration ship number, IG, the static, the static ports, the pita tubes, the nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. I'm gonna give you a better visual of those later on as well. Please stay tuned for that part. But right below the cockpit windows is the iconic lady decal you see there. This iconic flag carrying pinup lady who goes by the name of the Scarlet Lady appears on all Virgin Atlantic aircraft and has been rejuvenated with a subtile cosmetic makeover and enhanced detailing is now rocking a larger Union Jack which represents the flag of Great Britain. This logo was designed by British artist Ken White. And then underneath the iconic lady decal is Tink, the name of the aircraft Tinker Bell title right there. And this aircraft was given the name Tinker Bell, which is actually based on the fictional char character that was actually created in the 1904 play of Peter Pan by its original creator, the late Sir James Matthew Barry, who was born in 1860 and passed away in 1937, and also appeared in Walt Disney's 1953 animated cartoon classic version that was also based on the 1904 original play of Peter Pan. Okay? And then you see the uh, Virgin Atlantic billboard tied across the aircraft here, which is impressive. Perfect. And then right underneath the L1 um, entrance door is the Boeing 747-400 uh, decal. Virgin Atlantic took delivery of their very first Boeing 747-400 jetliner aircraft which bared the registration ship number G-VFAB on April 28, 1994 and took delivery of their very last Boeing 747-400 jetliner aircraft that bared the registration ship number G-VROM on March 29, 2012 as the London-based carrier at one time previously registered and operated as many as 13 of these iconic jetliners in their fleet. Unfortunately, this aircraft is no longer operating in the Virgin Atlantic fleet as of July 2021 or at the time of this video review posting. As Virgin Atlantic announced on May 5, 2020 that it would remove the Boeing 747 from its 
its fleet entirely as this aircraft has since been replaced with the newly arrival fuel efficient Airbus A350-1000XWB's extra wide body aircraft which officially became the official flagship jetliner for the Virgin Atlantic fleet on August 9, 2019. Alright, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft, what you're looking at these big massive engines right here. And these are the General Electric CF6-80C2B1F turbofan type engines that was used on this particular Virgin Atlantic Boeing 747-400 jetliner aircraft. You also see the, en uh, the engine cones right here as well as there. Now I'm going to turn this aircraft model around. Let's see the front of the engines and the turbofan blades through spin. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the port side of the aircraft and the fan blades do spin. Yes, awesome. Same here as well. Perfect, great. Then you see the inboard land light and then you see the flaps uh, slanted in a uh, flaps down position right here, there and there as well. And then as the uh, looking at the front visual view of the landing bogey gears on this side of the aircraft that features the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. Now looking at the front of the engines here on the starboard side of the aircraft and the turbo fan blade spin over here as well. Perfect. Great. There. And you can see the inboard land light as well as the flaps in a uh, flaps down downward position here, there, and there as well. As well as the front visual view of the landing bogey gears here on this side of the aircraft featuring the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft, we've got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the nose cone, the nose gear doors, the landing gear lights right there, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the landing gears, all right? Now you're looking at the winglet wingtip device displayed on this side of the aircraft featuring the uh, nice little red color right there, the ruby red color right there, along with the red navigation light that sits on the edge of the uh, blended winglet wingtip device. Now you're looking on the, uh, the aircraft and you got a better visual view of the uh, landing bogey gears here on this side as well as the center bogey gears which features the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the back of the wings here on the port side where you see the slats and the ailerons uh, in a flaps down downward position there, there as well. Very detailed and realistic, impressive. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft. What you see is the registration ship number, which is G-VBIG. Registration ship number G-VBIG. This was the third Boeing 747-400 jetliner aircraft that actually entered the Virgin Atlantic fleet. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on May 28, 1996 and was delivered to Virgin Atlantic on June 10, 1996. This aircraft, unfortunately, was eventually withdrawn from the Virgin Atlantic fleet on November 10, 2019, then was flown to an aircraft storage facility that's located on the grounds of the MOD, the Ministry of Defense, St. Athan Military Airfield Base Facility, which is located in the village of St. Athan in southern Wales on November 22, 2019, where this aircraft remained stored up at until May 2020, when this aircraft was eventually scrapped shortly thereafter. Okay. Now you're looking at the tail fin of the aircraft. You see that ruby red color there, the metallic red color there, featuring the Virgin logo on the tail fin of the aircraft. Then you see the partial registration ship number on the uh, tail fin IG. Now looking at the back of the aircraft, what you see is the APU auxiliary power unit exhaust hole, and there is a hole there. Check it out. Perfect. And underneath the APU exhaust hole is the strobe light that sits underneath the uh, APU exhaust hole, as well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Let's check it out. There it is, the Virgin Atlantic Boeing 747-400 in the flaps down version from the rear view angle beautiful all right now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the starboard side where you see the nose gears 
the nose gear struts, the landing gear lights, the nose gear door featuring the partial registering ship number on this nose gear door, IG, the st static ports and the pewter tubes, the nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the iconic uh, lady decal, the Tinkerbell name of the aircraft, the Boeing 747 decal, the front cargo containing loading door, as well as the Virgin Atlantic tire that sits across the upper part of the fuselage you see there. Okay. All right, now you look at the center of the aircraft where you see the uh, inboard landing lights right here, as well as the flaps in the uh, flaps down, downward position here, here, and there. And the, as well as the General Electric CF6 80C2B1F turbofan type engines right here, right there as well. Now you're looking at the metallic red. Uh, winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft featuring the green navigation light that sits near the uh, edge of this uh, winglet wingtip device and and yeah now you got a better visual view of the landing bogey gears here on this side of the aircraft right there as well as the center bogey gears there as well it features the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors Now you're looking at the back of the wings here on the starboard side, and what you see is the, uh, the slats and the ailerons in a flaps down downward position here as well as there. Man, impressive. Okay. All right. Now you're looking at the back of the aircraft here on the starboard side, where you see the rear cargo containing loading door, the AFT bolt bend door, the registration ship number, as well as the Virgin logo displayed on this. Uh, red metallic tail fin of the aircraft okay okay before i show you the area of bird's eye view of this aircraft as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft in full detail allow me to let you check out one feature which is the rolling gears let's check them out all rolls pretty good pretty smooth all right awesome and it tilts and the nose gear swivels as well okay okay so with that said allow me to show you the aerial bird's eye view of this aircraft model shall we let's check it out now you're looking at this aircraft model from the aerial bird's eye view we're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the nose cone the windshield wipers the cockpit windows the podscape hatch door you see the iconic virgin lady decal on both sides of the aircraft see the anti-collision beacon light, a high frequency antenna, you see the Virgin Atlantic tiles on both sides of the aircraft, you see the ADF antennas in 3D, the satellite communications antenna, as well as the tail, and then there's the horizontal stabilizer right there, you see the little black dot right there, as well as right there, those are called the luminaire lights, and the sole purpose of these luminaire lights is to light up this tail here, when it flies during nighttime, when it used to fly at nighttime, okay? Now let's check out the wings. All right, no wing walkway, but you got the engines right there. And now you see the flaps and the slats in a uh, flaps down position right there. There. Fuel dumb valve, as well as the Virgin logo display on this uh, wing, on this side of the winglet. Now let's check out over to this side here, no wing walkway. But you got the engines right there, as well as the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoils all in the flaps down, downward position right there. Fuel dump valve, as well as the Virgin logo display on this side of the wing as well. Now you're looking at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail. We're going to start at the front here. The nose cone, the closed nose gear door. The open nose gear door, the nose gear, and then you see the Virgin Atlantic billboard title right there. And then you see the uh, high frequency antenna there, the anti collision beacon light, the hole where the stand goes in at. And then let's talk about the center bogey gears here. They tilt, uh, yeah, they tilt a little bit. That one's a little challenging, but it's all right. And then you see the Gemini Just logo, a couple more high frequency antennas, 
the pressure relief valve and the APU housing door as well as the horizontal stabilizers underneath now let's check out on this side here yeah a little problem tilting there but it's all good but you can see the uh, engines there underneath as well as the flaps slats aileron spoil you see slanted in a downward flaps down position there registration ship number the fuel dump valve as well as the winglet let's check out over here on this side no good problem tilting there but it's all good but you see the engines right there as well as the flap slaps aileron spores in a flaps down slanted down position fuel dump valve as well as the wing on this side of the aircraft as well Okay, since I show you the area of bird's eye view of this aircraft model, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model in full detail, now I'm going to put it on that nice little uh, model stand you see there that came with the model. So with no further ado, everyone, here is the model on the stand. Let's check it out. All right, got this model on the stand with no problem, no issues, no hesitation whatsoever. Now I'm going to let you check it all out while it rotates in all directions, starting on the port side you see here. Now you're looking at the back of the aircraft from the tail cam angle. Now you're looking at the starboard side of the aircraft. As well as the front side of the aircraft in the takeoff landing position with the model being displayed on the model stand. All right, before I take this model off the stand, I got in this position for a reason. And the reason is, is the magnetic gears that actually came with the model. So I'm going to go ahead and take them off, starting with the front nose gear right here. And they all magnetic. Right there. The gears here on the port side. Right there, magnet gears on the starboard side and the middle bogey gears here as well there. there okay now since I got all the gears off here I'm gonna let you see this model at a different angle in flight mode position check it out okay now you see a model being displayed without the gears in flight mode position with the model displayed on the stand now you got one or two options how you want to display your model if you want to continue to display it like that without the gears and gear up position that's fine you remember these gear replacement doors i showed you early on in the model review that's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors is to substitute your gears while you display your model like this in flight mode position or you can do what i suggested just keep them in gear down position I keep mine in gear down position. That's just my preference because it adds more value to the model. So with that said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model. Take this model stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review. All right. All right. Let's talk about the seating configuration. Virgin Atlantic had two seated configurated cabin layouts for their Boeing 747-400 jetliner aircraft. We're going to talk about the Heathrow configurated for version first. As the Heathrow configurated version 747 seated 367 passengers in a three class configurated cabin layout. Here's the breakdown, everyone, from rows one to five, which is the upper deck, which will be from here to here. You have 10 upper class seats in rows 12 to 25, which is the main deck, which will be from here to about right there. You have another 34 upper class seats which brings a total of 44 upper class seats and rows 28 to 37 which is the main deck which would be from here to here you have 62 premium economy class seats then rows 39 to 66 which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft you have 228 economy class seats, and then you have rows 75 to 80, which is the upper deck, which will be from here to here. 
You had an additional 33 economy class seats, which brings the total of 261 seats, which brings the total of that one is 367 seats. And then there's the Gatwick configurated 747, which seated 455 passengers in a three class configurated cabin layout. Row 6 to 12, which is the main deck, which would be from here to here, you have 14 upper class seats. Rows 14 to 19, which will be from here to here. You have 46 premium economy class seats. And then rows 20 to 24, which is the upper deck, here to here. You had 20 premium economy class seats, which brings a total of the 66 premium economy class seats. And rows 25 to uh, 66, which will be from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft there. You had 342 economy class seats and then row 75 to 80, which is the upper deck, which will be from here to here. You had an additional 33 economy class seats, which brings a total of 375 seats. And finally, Virgin Atlantic previously employed their Boeing 747-400s on routes from London Heathrow to Newark, New Jersey, New York, JFK, Los Angeles, California, San Francisco, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, Miami, Florida, Boston, Massachusetts, Kingston, Jamaica, and London Gatwick. And from no sorry, and from London Gatwick to Montego Bay, Jamaica, Orlando, Florida, Las Vegas, Nevada, Havana, Cuba, Cancun, Mexico, Bridgetown, Barbados, and Belfast, Ireland. And from Manchester, England, to Atlanta, Georgia, New York, JFK, Orlando, Florida, Bridgetown, Barbados, and Las Vegas, Nevada, and from Glasgow, Scotland, to Orlando, Florida, and from Belfast, Ireland, to Orlando, Florida, and London, Gatwick. Those are the routes. Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting this model. I know the flaps up is still available, but that's becoming the run scares as well. But this one, this is almost impossible to get. The only outside chance of getting this model, if you can find it, is on eBay at this point. Most of them pretty much sold this out pretty quick. I pretty much uh, bought this model the same day that Virgin Atlantic uh, announced that they was going to do away with this 747, but like a few hours earlier before they announced it. So I'm glad I got this model. So with that said, take care. God bless. There's more mild content coming. Peace.